Hi, welcome back again. Um, this is Unit 5. You're making very good, steady progress. Well done. So in Unit 5, we're going to be looking at uh, hemorrhagic, sometimes known as hematoxic, uh, envenoming or envenomation, and we've uh, titled it hemorrhagic envenoming the colubrids. And by the end of this unit, which is a pretty short one, I hope, I tend to talk too much when I get excited, the participant will be able to describe the common signs and symptoms associated with hemorrhagic and venomation. Uh, also be able to briefly describe and recognize Zimbabwean snakes which are associated with serious hemorrhagic and venomation. And here I chose the word serious because you'll find that some of the cytotoxic snakes um, do have some mild hemorrhagic uh, symptoms at the bite site, but the more serious ones are as a result of the colibrids. And whilst I'm still here, perhaps just to make mention of uh, the uh, puff adder and the gabon uh, adder or gabon viper that we talked about in Unit 3, that a, 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 a bite from a big puff adder or a gabon adder can actually also lead to serious coagulopathy and it messes your clotting mechanisms and the person can actually have signs and symptoms similar to this. But also by the end of this, number three, we want the participants to be able to state the regions of Zimbabwe where the medically important, that should not be neurotoxic, that should be where the medically important uh, hemotoxic um, or hemorrhagic envenoming uh, snakes are found. So I think this picture says it all, the picture at the top, that when you're talking about hemorrhagic envenomation, it is venom which basically leads a person to start bleeding from various places. Most of the times, all the orifices uh, in the human body. So when someone is beaten by a snake, which has got serious hemorrhagic envenomation or envenoming, um, you get bleeding from the gums and the mouth, just like this picture that we have here on, on your left. We get bleeding in the gastrointestinal tract as well, meaning that the person, you might find that the person is, is uh, you know, having um, feces which have got a lot of blood, duck feces, uh, depending on uh, when they go after the bleeding starts, as well as the genital urinary tract. You know, you might find traces of blood also occurring in, 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 in the urine. And also you get bleeding from recent wounds. So, you know, you would have been okay. You thought, okay, this wound I think is healing well, then bam, it starts bleeding again uh, if you're bitten by a hemorrhagic uh, envenoming snake, as well as partly healed uh, wounds. And you find that with uh, you know bites from this snake or these types of snake, death uh, can ensue can ensue after two to three days, sometimes even longer, depending on you know the type of management that the patient is getting. So it's it's not it's not it's not a very nice envenomation, so to speak. So when someone is bitten, they might probably not even see any uh, swelling. Uh, there might be probably some blood just oozing out of the bite site. You might go to bed, wake up in the middle of the night to find that there's blood on the pillow. And that's how this is. It's almost like a, a silent, silent, silent death, so to speak. So the hematoxic envenoming snakes in uh, uh, Zimbabwe you know, they've got venoms which lead to generalized bleeding uh, in the body as they affect the body's ability to coagulate blood. So your, 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 the body's ability to, you know, the clotting mechanisms are messed up such that, you know, you, you, you can't really adequately coagulate the blood. And the hemorrhagic snakes in Zimbabwe belong to the backfanged colubrid uh, family. And we've got two. Um, the first one is the boom's lung. Uh, and the second one is the savannah twig snake or the savannah vine snake. And these two are the snakes which are responsible for hemotoxic or hemorrhagic envenomation in Zimbabwe. So just a little bit about colibris. I think we spoke about them earlier, must have been in Unit 1, that colibris are a very large family of snakes. And most non-venomous snakes actually belong to, to, to this family. They're actually called the true serpents or the, the, the true the true snakes, uh, these colibrids, 
they are normally long and thin snakes and are back fanged. That's an example of a back fang. This is a, a, a boom slang and the fangs are right there at the back. So I try as much as possible to make sure that I acknowledge the source of every picture which I take uh, from the internet, you know, so that we don't get into trouble later on. And that's what a back, back bang snake would look like. The fangs are situated at the back, and largely because they're at the back, they're pretty small. And you'd find that many of these snakes, they, they, they have to chew on the victim in order to get a significant amount of venom to, to, uh, to penetrate. But interestingly, for this colibrid species, the uh, boom slang is thought to have the most potent venom of all the snakes, at least on the African uh, African continent, even more potent than that of the black bamba. So when we talk of potency, we'll be talking about the quantity which is required in order for you to, to start exhibiting toxic effects. So with the boom slang, you need a very minute quantity of the venom uh, to, for, for, for your body to come into contact with a very minute quantity before you start getting um, you know, the medically important signs and symptoms information. So the two species that we have are the boom slang. And this is a boom slang, male boom slang. You tell the greenish, blackish color. And then this would be your savannah twig snake. And they're both uh, tree snakes. But uh, especially the boom slang does fairly well also on the ground. It actually gets down from the trees sometimes to hunt, be it chameleons or whatever else on the ground before going back to the tree. But they are largely tree snakes. Which I've just seen the savannah uh, tree snake. So when it is agitated and upset, just like this story, which ah, well maybe I shouldn't be talking about these interesting stories, but there's an interesting case which is documented in uh, Zimbabwe. I think someone was uh, admitted at Mpilo Hospital after being beaten by one of these uh, savannah tree snakes, which uh, somebody uh, had as a pet snake. I mean, really a pet snake. Anyhow. So uh, what to expect in terms of hemorrhagic uh, envenomation? For those who are healthcare professionals, you would know about INR. Um, and, uh, you know, the typical results that you'd find for the international, uh, like, international normalized ratio would be typically what you would get perhaps for someone who has taken an overdose of warfarin, you know, to show that coagulation has been messed up. So it'd be very high values. So these pictures, although they're not really from, from a boom slang or a twig snake, the type of picture that you'd find from a bite from those two snakes would be something similar to this. He's bleeding from the gums. He's been bleeding for a while. And this one is a result of a sore-scaled um, viper uh, in Nigeria. And these snakes also uh, have got a hemorrhagic uh, in, 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 in a hemorrhagic envenomation, envenoming venom. <laughs> some repetition there, you see. So this is basically what I wanted to show you uh, pictures. So this was a pretty short one, um, eight minutes now. So we say the most important snakes are the boom slang and the savannah twig snake, and that these can be found throughout uh, uh, Zimbabwe, that bites from these snakes are very rare. But that for the boom slang, there is an antivenin which exists. But for the savannah uh, twig snake or vine snake, there is no antivenom. And management, as we shall talk about it later, should largely be symptomatic uh, and supportive. You know, as you you give fresh frozen plasma, as, as well as you know, other uh, supportive uh, measures to try and stop the bleeding. Otherwise, uh, we've come to the end of uh, this session on uh, hemorrhagic envenoming. I hope that you learned something. It's time for you now to take the quiz and see how much you managed to get. So until we meet again uh, for the next unit, uh, unit, uh, what was this? This would be, that would be unit six. Uh, this is Prof. Toxins, Professor Tagwire, and I say I'm out. God bless you.